Hey guys, I am Daisho, and I am back with some more of Daisho's Playbook, and this is Grave Whispers, and I know a lot of you are probably sick of seeing this, and you're just like, Daisho, shut the fuck up, oh, well, sorry about that, Daisho, just shut up and take us to the end so that we can actually see a gameplay, because <laughs> I know most of you don't care about, not most of you, I think most of you do care about this, that's why I'm doing these videos, but I know that there are a few of you who don't, anyway, Grave Whispers, I know I've already done like a, uh, a decently recent, recently decent? I don't even know. I've done. I I did one of these a little while ago, a deck out of Grave Whispers, but I am going to redo it because I was redoing all of the others, and I have a super cool, awesome name. Now I have probably by now I have a playlist of these because this is the fourth one that I'm recording, even though I recorded all the other ones within the past few hours. But we're doing it, guys. Grave Whispers has changed a little bit, and I like it a lot this way. I kept almost the uh, the same things, but I added a couple of new elements into it. Let's get rolling. Disentomb I previously didn't have, but every time I draw this card, I'm just like, alright, this is good. Now I can use my creatures in a different way, and uh, if I have if I have my 2-1 Liana spec, then uh, I can I can go get that back, and that's really cool. Um, I'm really happy when I have Crest for the Gravelord out in Disentomb, because I can, I can use my creatures in ways that I didn't want to. I can... Uh, block with hypnotic specters because I almost never want to do that because usually they're just too powerful. But I can block with a hypnotic specter, kill a creature that he wouldn't think I would have, I wouldn't, I would have blocked. Let. So then uh, that creature dies, and then that's two counters for the quest, and it's only one away from becoming a super awesome five five black zombie great bear giant creature. Woohoo! Plus uh, zombies, they might get benefits from your opponent's uh, cards. I'm not really sure. Also, they might help your opponent's cards. Actually, I, earlier I saw Lord of the Undead. Uh, didn't work. He was supposed to uh, give all zombie creatures plus one plus one, but my opponent was running this deck and he had like uh, Siphon Flesh or something like that, so he had a 2 2 zombie and that didn't help him out. So I uh, don't think that works, but it did It did make my Soulless one stronger. So anyway, you gotta be wary of that. The Rack. This card's interesting. Like, some people don't like it. I, I, I just recently found out. Like, I had always assumed, wow, the rack, best card in the game. Or, like, best card in the deck or whatever. And it's really cool because it helps you in that your main way of control, making them not have cards, also deals damage to them. And it's not just, like, one damage per turn. Because if they have zero cards at hand, and if you make them to go down to zero with Mind Rod or whatever, then it'll take them a few turns to get back to even not getting, like, tons of damage per turn, and if they ever want to play something, then they still take three damage per turn. It won me a game earlier today, and I was I was really happy about that. Maybe it didn't win me the game. I probably would have won anyway, but it definitely sped up the process and made me a lot more comfortable. Consumed Spirit is really good. Uh, it deals a lot of damage, kills creatures, kills men, gains you life, does everything you need. It's a little expensive, but it's still useful. Doom Blade... Oh my god, Doomblade. Doomblade is amazing. Destroy target non-black creature. The only problem is, the two best decks, or two, two, not the two best, that was, I spoke out of line, I am wrong. Two of, two other really good decks, the zombies and uh, the vampires, only have black creatures. So I am like, almost to the point where I'm just like, you know what, screw this, I'm taking out Doomblades and putting in Demon's Horns. Because Demon's Horn is basically the opposite of Doomblade. If they're playing a black deck, you're not going to want to have any Doomblades in, and you actually kind of want the Demon's Horns. So, uh, I haven't, I'm not to that point yet. I'm almost, I was considering earlier today just going like, bam, or well, bam, and then, uh, just bam. Like, just, just one. Maybe just one. But, for now... We're just gonna we're just gonna keep it like this and uh, try to be try to be normal try to be smart and intelligent. Anyway, Marsh Casualties amazing kills a lot of guys wrecks the elf deck probably will wreck the new soldier token deck. And I don't know why I keep calling it a soldier token deck. It's just a token deck and like token pump deck, so it's really good. Our Skellingtons is amazing. I won a game against uh, Realm of Illusion because of him today. My opponent just had a Lord of the Unreal, and he couldn't swing in with it because every time he did, I just kept blocking. And I didn't want to play any of my cards because um, I knew he had cancels in his hand. And uh, in the end, I outsmarted him, and I played like I kicked a Marsh Casualties, and got. And he, I knew he only had one card in hand, so I kicked a Marsh Casualties, and he counterspelled that. So I was like, okay, like if I do get the Marsh Casualties off, then I'm like, yay, I get rid of Lord of the Unreal, Krovica Mist, and uh, I'm happy. And if I don't get the Marsh Casualties off, then I know that he's out of counter spells, and unless he top decks like a boss, I can play Grave Titan next turn, which I did, and then he quit out because the game was over. 
Actually, no, he didn't quit out. I swung in the next turn, and then I killed him with Consumed Spirit. But anyway, Hypnotic Spectre. This guy is awesome. This guy really is just awesome. Flying, when he deals damage to an opponent, that player discards a card at random. Can't even choose. It's just all random. He doesn't even know what's going on. Um, it's it's so cool to use that card with Mind Rot because you Mind Rot first, then he gets rid of the cards that he doesn't really care about, and then you swing him with Not Expector, and then only the cards that he really wants are left in his hand, and one of them gets discarded. So um, it works out that way. I mean, you could argue that it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just a higher uh, chance that you get his number one card out of his hand because otherwise you could just say, yeah, well, if you do it the other way, then you swing in and uh, you get rid of the fifth card that he wanted if he only has five cards in his hand then he can then choose from those four and he still has to get rid of two of them so then he gets rid of four and three but this way you can actually get rid of one or two i don't know if anyone understood that it made sense in my mind but uh we'll just go with it literally on a specter you get four of them which is cool when he enters the battlefield disc they discard and it's a two-one flyer so it's not bad it would be really really bad if um if this was a multicolored deck because it's one in two black just for a liliana specter but it's good. It's good in this uh, in this way. Anyway, mind rot. Target player discards two. They have to throw away two of them. Uh, late in the game, it's really not that useful because they're probably going to be top decking anyway. But early on, it's just clutch and so so useful to uh, to be able to control them in that way. So I absolutely love it. Quag sickness is really good. It kills a lot of things that shouldn't be killed, like stuff with indestructible or stuff with totem armor because they just get die they get minus one minus one plus even if it doesn't kill them it at least cripples their creature so makes it unusable it's a really good card and i mean obviously it'll eventually kill them it's a really good card you should definitely run it uh mona the unhallowed i think i had i think i had two of them in earlier but i took one out for scavenger drake but it, it's okay i mean mid game sometimes you're having trouble um if they still have some extra cards like like you haven't gotten them to discard all their cards so then you can play moan get a couple of zombies and uh happy days ensue plus it's got flashbacks so late game another two zombies can't hurt more divorce pretty cool his power and toughness are cool the number of creatures in all graveyards so he's pretty strong usually and he has regen for one so even if he's not that strong he's still an amazing blocker really good card he got it was it was actually kind of interesting i was playing against unquenchable and i played him he got incinerated so obviously didn't didn't regen then i put then uh since i had the extra mana open um because you always want to play him turn five because you want to be able to uh, regenerate him in case they have a kill spell or something like that so then i just disentombed him and picked him back up and then played him the next turn and he really wasn't able to do much after that. Anyway, Scavenger Drake is really, really cool. I like him especially because of the new tokens and stuff. Because then, like, uh, against March to War, it's really, really useful. Because if you kill one of... If, if you just play him, then they'll be less inclined to attack. Because not only every time they attack, you can still kill one of their guys. Because he's obviously going to be stronger than a 1-1. One -one because you can just chump block with one of your other guys. But anyway, so this guy is always going to be stronger. Um, and then, then it's really, it's still useful because then he gets bigger and bigger and bigger as, and they guess just get less inclined to attack. Speaking of unrest is okay. I don't run it in the zombies as you'll see, because I feel like there are better choices, but in this deck, it's kind of, I mean, better choices for like bombs and stuff, but in this deck, it's kind of nice to have a bomb, especially since, um, since you're running, since you're running this deck as a control deck. So it basically means that you'll be able to get to the later land drops more easily than you would in something like the Zombies, which has some control splashed in, but it's not really a control deck. So this card, I mean, it lets you go get back a creature and artifact um, from your graveyard or someone else's. So the theory is, like, you use Mind Rot, they realize that they're not going to be able to play their big guys, so they throw them away, and then you're like, hey, I'll go get them back, that'll be cool. Anyway, Blood Gift Demon is pretty awesome. <laughs> he's a 5-4 flyer for 5, so just right there, he's not bad. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you can draw a card and you lose a life, which is just like meh. And it's just really funny if, you, if they're ever at like one life and you can kill them with it. Corrupt, I had out for a while, and then I realized that I was an idiot because Corrupt is just amazing. <laughs> it's nothing new, you guys have already seen it, but it's still amazing. Grave Titan's pretty cool. I really, really like him. Um... He's just he's just an amazing card. He'll win you so many games. So yeah, and then Maskorm. So like the last few cards are just bombs, but Maskorm is so good. Like I really thought I was gonna win. I don't remember what deck I was playing. Maybe March to War. 
it was probably March to War, and I really thought I was going to... No, no, I was playing Zombies. That was it. And I had Endless Ranks of the Dead out, which is um, the one that keeps giving you more plus one... Must, more 2-2 more two, two tokens every turn. And I had Lord of the Undead out, and um, then he... Like, I thought I was turning the game around and I was going to win. And then he's just like Massacre Worm, and all my guys die, and I take like 10 damage, and then he just wins. So, um, that's, that's how that went. I was kind of sad. And he also had a Scavenger Drake out, so that was a nasty, nasty combo. But anyway, let's go up here. Unholy Strength is an aura, and it's plus two plus one, so that's pretty good. But you're not really doing your damage by swinging in. Spoken about Demon's Horn. Liliana's Caress is okay, but it's it just requires you to take another turn before you can start controlling them. That I don't like. And the damage is sometimes nice, but you're usually not going to have too much trouble killing them once you get them down to zero cards anyway. And they're just top decking. Sometimes it's like really close, and you're just like, ah, damage, 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 damage. But sometimes it's really easy. Gloom Hunter really isn't bad. Like, I was hating on it so much, but it is a three cost, two, one flyer. Like, it's definitely not good, and I'm not going to be running it or anything, but uh, it's, I was hating on it too much earlier. <laughs> Underworld Dreams isn't great. Um, I would consider playing this card if I knew I was going to play against Realm, because it, it, it seems like Realm just kind of wrecks you, because it's just like, alright, it's late in the game, you've been controlling their card total all game, and then they just pull out a Mindspring, or they pull out Jace's Ingenuity. Well, this prevents them from doing that. If they play Mindspring for 5, then they take 5 damage, and they can't really do anything about it. Um, it's not the worst card in the world, but I don't really run it. Uh, Blood Tithe is good in multiplayer, but in single player, it's just three they lose three and you gain three for four it's definitely not worth it ghoul draw specter i i used to really like and then i realized that he really didn't do much for me most of the time that's what everyone was saying and i was like no no guys he's good he's good don't worry about it he's cool let him in come on let him into no um no this card isn't good it's a two two flyer for four and like by the time you got four mana out they're not gonna have very many cards in hand so it's going to suck for them. Uh, Siphon Mind, each other player discards a card. Again, not really that good in single player. It's pretty good in multiplayer, but not that good in single player. Monomania is one of those cards where it's just not good. Target player chooses a card, and his hand discards the rest. So they get their favorite card, and they have to discard the rest. Plus, it's a five drop, so by then, <laughs> they're probably out of cards anyway. And it's, it's also one of those cards that it could just completely wreck them. If they're playing Ancient Depths and they have seven cards in hand, and they only have like four mana out or five mana out, well, by then they'll have six mana out, whatever. Then you play this, and they're like, uh, but, uh, now I'm dead. <laughs> anyway, Ob, I don't like Ob. I mean, he doesn't have Trample, so the, the three plus one plus one counters are not that useful. They're not bad. Don't get me wrong, but uh, target player lose three life for for a land is it's okay, but you, there's no way you're gonna have stockpiled lands by the time you get to five land drops. So say you'll probably do it two times for the rest of the game. So then you're paying five mana to deal six damage and have a nice guy out there. Eh, it's not the it's not the worst thing, but he's just not the best bomb out there, and I don't think that he's really worth it, um, especially with all the life gain and stuff going around. Siphon Flesh just isn't a good card. Each other player sex is on, but you put a two two. Uh, black zombie onto the battlefield for each creature sacrifice on the way again multiplayer happy not in other formats so anyway that was what did i change i don't know um, <laughs> that was my uh grave whispers deck and i'm gonna jump into a game i don't really want to play against any dlc all right i'll just be back when i find a game see you guys soon Hey guys, I am Dyshow and I am here bringing you some magic. This is the gameplay for my Dyshow's Playbook Grave Whispers, and this is an interesting hand. I don't even play first, but I have three R. Skellingtons and Marsh Casualties and Liliana Spectre. Um, this is keepable, um, for sure. He's got Squatty the Squadron, Squad Hawk. Uh, so immediately I'm thinking that I'm gonna lose this game because <laughs> he's playing aura pants and I don't have any instants instants are what are what wrecks aura mancer and I mean if I could have infinite chump blockers that'd be nice but it's not gonna do anything against him this game uh, and then he's if he's got like oaken form turn three I don't even know what I can do about it but We'll see. I mean, we're not going to give up before the game even starts. He didn't play anything turn two. That's nice, right? Right? Uh, the rack is could be useful. If he empties out his hand, maybe I'll be able to kill him, beat him down with reassembling skeletons. Is that how we're going to roll here? Maybe. Um, I really don't want to see Boron Burrow. Ooh. Ouchie. Ouchie. That is worse than either of the other two, especially since he's just outside of Marsh Casualties range. Maybe I'll draw Quag Sickness off the top, 
that'd be uh, that'd be nice. But basically, that just means that I'm not gonna beat him down faster than he's gonna beat me down. Doom Blade. That is on time. All right, we'll play the rack so that we still have Doom Blade mana open, and uh, hopefully I'll draw a land next turn. That way I can play our Skellies and something else. But I'm really happy that I got Doom Blade. Hopefully he'll try to equip it up with something else, and then in response I can kill it. And that's why I freaking have Doom Blades in the deck still. Because if it's not against, there we go, Oak and Form. That's how we do it. Um, just die. Go away. Get out of here, Oak and Form. Get out of here. Super awesome card. You're just done. This is not your time to shine anymore. I should have waited, cause if he, <laughs> I, I just assumed he wasn't gonna play a land, but if he had played, l l wow, Quag Sickness too. All right, cool. Uh, we'll play Liliana Spec. Little Spec. You can throw one of those away and take a damage next turn, sir. I don't mind. It'll be okay with me. Um, another Oaken form. Wow. But anyway, if he had a Hyena Umbra or a Lifelink in his hand, and he was going to play it just after he played the Oaken form, then that would have been better, and I didn't need to wait. If I, The only time I would have had to wait is if it was like a Boar Umbra or an Armadillo Cloak or something like that. Not an Armadillo Cloak, a Canopy Cover. Uh, damn it! I was going to be able to go get it back, but it's not such a big deal, because I can still kill it with Quag Sickness, so I guess I'm not too upset. Uh, there we go. It's not a bad draw. Um, I mean, I would. This basically just means that I'm swinging him with our skeletons, because there's no point in leaving him back to block. Um, and I don't care if he dies. I'll go get him back later. And I have a quest out, so that's nice. And now I can just play other R Skelly, and then you're just gonna be like, um, equip up my guy with freaking armadillo cloak, and then I'm gonna be like, oh god, oh god, oh wait. No land? No land? Yes! Alright, I can kill that guy next turn. So that's good for me. Okay, um, I think I, I think I stay, I, ah, leave my guy alive this turn. But, I'm so happy that he doesn't have something for that guy. Alright, I'll take the extra swamp, but for now I'll just kill you. And then swing on in there. Um, do I leave one back? Yeah, I'll leave, ah, uh, maybe I'll leave both back. No, because he's just gonna, he's just gonna play Armadillo Cloak. Although if I had left both back, then I could have gotten a five-five out of it. But um, I mean, letting letting the uh, letting the core spirit dancer get started is just a huge, huge mistake. So that's basically why I did the what I did. Um, but now he has a four-four life link. Not too happy about that. Um, I definitely need to get myself a zombie. I guess I could just hold back next turn, and then he can't really swing in. Blood Gift Demon is nice. Um, so we're, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to hold back with Uri Buddy. Actually, I can swing in with one, um, deal one damage to him, and then if he swings in, then I'll just triple block, unless, of course, he gets a freaking guy. In which case, I'll just double block, and then um, I'll be happy still. But I just I need one more land for Blood Gift Demon, and that'll be nice. I'm only at 10 life, though, so that's not great. Um, or a Gnarlid. Never really want to see that, bro. Um, but hopefully he'll swing in here, and then I can kill it with, like, Marsh Casualties. He's not going to swing in. All right, cool. Um, and I have nothing to respond to with Or Gnarlid either. All right, we got land. Um, do I just swing in with everybody? No, because he won't block. He's smart enough not to block. I mean, he might be smart enough not to block. So I think I just play Blood Gift Demon and say go. Um, I can still block his Oranarlid unless he plays two guys, and I would be willing to trade my Blood Gift Demon for an Oranarlid, which is kind of depressing. But that's just how good Narlid is. Pacifism, damn it! Because not only does that works on so many levels, because now now it makes this guy better. Life Link two, shit. This is bad. This is very very bad, guys. This is not good. Because now he's about to go back up to 21. And nope, yeah, just that one. There you go. That's how you do it, sir. Um, this is this is bad. I need a Doom Blade right now, right now. At least I still get to uh, at least I still get to draw two cards. So hopefully one of them will be a Doom Blade. Our Skellington's number fifty-seven thousand here. Not your service. Uh, uh, let's just read this card again. Creatures with power less than him can't block him. So you might say that I have lost the game. 
one might say that. But you would be wrong, because Daisho is an idiot, and he figured out that creature's target player... Oh, God. Um, everybody gets in there. Everybody gets in there. Um, oh, no, he can block and gain four life. Damn it. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, you might think that the game is over. But Daisho has a little surprise for you, bitches, because he's going to march casualties himself. What's going on, guys, you might ask? My thing is fucking full now, bitches! Ha ha ha. That was awesome. <laughs> and uh, I still have that, so I don't die from him either. Um, but I don't think I'm going to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> and if he's got any okay come on swing in with your knowledge bro do it swing in come on you got this shit swing in with he sees it but that was awesome i love that play so much uh suntail hawk yup and what else you got for me bro i have another couple of turns guys it's okay hold on uh i think i want to make my guy now and soon i'm gonna run out of life consume spirit uh, one of them be consume spirit. Come on, guys. Land consume spirit. Oh my god, I gotta consume spirit. <laughs> what the fuck? How did this happen? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, alright, alright. I do not have enough land. I need one more fucking land right now. Um, what are the chances he blocks with Gnarled? What are the chances he blocks with Gnarled? Um, pretty low. Do I swing in here? If I swing in, then... Uh, shoot. If I swing in... I'm gonna consume spirit this turn anyway. So I'll kill his 4-4. Four, four. Oh, no. I'll kill his 4-4 four, four if he doesn't block with... Yes! He blocked with Gnarlin! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is working out so freaking well. Creatures. Gnarlin! Get him out of here! Back up to 7 life. I've got a 5-5 five, five zombie, and he's only at 2 cards in hand and 24 life. <laughs> but, oh my god, Mesa Enchantress. Yeah, why not? Alright. Oh my god, this game is nuts! Swing it for 1. I know, it's how it works here. And I have... Do I have all 4 of these guys in there? Yeah, I have 4 our Richard Skellingtons in my graveyard. But I need to keep drawing. Because I need to find answers, of which I have proved Titan! What are you doing, buddy? That is what I'm talking about. I don't know why I didn't swing in with five first, but damn, this is fucking awesome. All right, yep, he's coming in there. Still got Disentomb, which isn't really too good, but he's at 19, see at 19, sir. He has no more removal in his deck, but I am at five. Um, if he's got, like, Oak... Oaken form, then that's good enough. But I could. Oh, God damn it! I'm. I hate. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What are you going to get? There's too many good stuff. No, this is bad. Are you getting core spirit dancer? That works. Playing it and Daicho is now terrified again. But uh, let's see. I can swing in for a bunch next turn. I need answers still. Give me another Consume Spirit. Beacon of Unrest. Um, Gnarlid? Anyone have heard, anyone has, has anyone heard of a Gnarlid? Right? Um, is that what I go for? I could make him discard both of the cards. No, he played, he played Core Spirit Dancer. I'm at four. Um, if I get Gnarlid, then it's a, it's only a three, three? So that's not such a big deal. Um, I could just make him discard, um, disentomb my other Liliana Spectre, and then make him discard the other. And then I have flying blockers. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. And um, I could have I could have done this a while ago. Silver Goat Lion, whatever. And then. Uh, Play that one. Discard the other one, sir. And now I have flying blockers, and I'm safe from oaken form. This is working out. Um, I still am. I'm gonna leave the. Oh, wow! Three dreams. It's clutch that he didn't have that. I'll just swing in with this guy. He can't even kill it. I get it. I should have swung in with my zombie tokes. Maybe I don't know. He's at 12, and now he's at nine. 
and I think I, I can even do some math here. Uh, he's at nine, and he's got a Gnarlid, which I don't really care about since I think I went. So essentially he's at 13 because he can block with um, with his 4-4. Four four. Um, All right, so he can block with the 4-4 four four next turn. He can block with... All right, so he's got four blockers, so that's uh, zom Big Zombie, Grave Titan, Zombie, Zombie. So then I have, and since he swung in with his fucking Sun Tail Hawk, I have eight coming through, and then he's, he's at 13. Um, so I only have eight damage coming through, and then three at the beginning of the turn, and then one because I'll Blood Give Demon him. And he just quit out, but I, I just described to you the, uh, the way that I have won that game. BAM! That was an awesome game. <laughs> I am really proud of that one. I don't know why. That was so clutch. There were so many situations where I only needed a couple of cards, and though I was drawing two per turn, I kept drawing uh, into really, really good things, and that was fun. Like, I, I really enjoy those kind of games, so I hope you guys like the, that one as much as I did, and uh, have a nice day, guys. Bye.